new stuff back in the back. Y'all guys, if you want to stop by and see what they did in the back. And I hope the sound sounds better, everything. Dustin and has been working really hard. But sometimes with all the stuff coming at us, the place God wants us to be still and listen to him is the place where he's going to catapult us into doing more and going further and going and getting the goal that he's called us to do. But until we retrieve back and sit before him and truly be still and know that he is God over the floods, over the storms, over the victories, over he's still God. And once we get that into our spirits, and then into our minds, our body will align with what God has for us to do. I'm so excited about sharing the word with you today. First of all, I had another message that I was going to do uh, last week, and Pastor and I had talked about it. And then um, when I woke up early on Thursday morning, the Holy Spirit uh, just asked me a question. And, and out of that, I felt like the Lord gave me the message that he wanted me to do today, the word that he wants you to have in truly impregnated into your souls and your spirits. See, if you don't get it in your soul, your mind, your will, and emotion, you may not ever get it down into the spirit. But if you're connected with the spirit and you get it first in the spirit, your soul's going to line up. And then your body will follow. But sometimes we're connected backwards. We're connected by the soul, the mind, the will, and the emotion instead of first being connected with the spirit of the living God and having him in total control. How many of y'all want God to be in total control of your lives today? That's what I want. I don't want to be a part-time Christian or a part-time uh, I'm in your will, Jesus. I want to be in his will in a 24-7 mode. And so I just want to um, uh, tell you today that Pastor I'm just honored whenever pastor asked me to fill the pulpit. But when I spoke to him, he said, well, Sheila, whatever you want to do. Sometimes I get up at 4 o'clock in the morning on Sunday, and God says, that's not what I said to do. So as I started to write and I started to put things together, I said, oh, Lord, this is kind of a strange title for, for, uh, for a Pentecostal church of God. But um, as the Lord talked to me about truly connecting with the love of God, because it's the love of God that's going to change every person on this earth. If they're going to be changed for the godliness and the goodness of God, the only way it can happen is through the gift of love, the fruit of love. And, you know, I thought today in, in our society, we have an erotic love. We have a Phileo love, which is brotherly love. Erotic love is, is you know, I was, we were at our grandkids' house and um, our little seven-year-old a few weeks ago, and, and he was talking to him about school, and he kept talking about one little girl and kept talking about, and finally his papa asked Axel, he says, is that your girlfriend? And, you know, it kind of looked at him, and he kind of smiled. He says, no, I just like her a lot. So even kids know about connecting and and having someone that's special in your life. And, and the world is caught up in that. The world is in the erotic love. It's everything from our commercials that you see on television to certain things you see in movies, things that you see. I mean, commercials are filthy right now, guys. Just saying. Amen? So we need to start praying that God will take a hold of the lives of those people in the media, those people in Hollywood, that we need to, we need to pray for that every day. But it's only going to be love. And then there's agape love. And see, Pastor has asked us, and he passed, asked me to, to really, again, mention about connect, grow, and serve. Because there's a lot of new things coming through the, the pathway for Parkway Life here. And one of those great things is going to be more connect groups. Because I really believe, and after I was in New Hampshire last weekend ministering at a women's conference and then at my brother's church in um, Auburn, New Hampshire, and there um, he has close to 600 people attending his church and two churches, two campuses, one smaller campus, one larger campus, and they have close to 300 people connected in their connect groups. And you know what? And I just want to encourage you that they're going to be coming up, that pastor's going to be offered a whole series of connect groups, and we're going to build, the way we're going to get to know each other is we're going to get to know each other by connecting to one another, growing through the word together, and then serving in love together. 
And so today, that's what I want to talk to you, is I want to talk to you about the love connection. I want to tell you, this is not up on the board, but I want to read to you. I had to, I got a power pack on one side, and I had to put my glasses over here. I come well abled here. Amen. Now I can see my message so y'all can get the right scriptures. If you want to turn with me with, to Galatians 5, 22 and 23, this is what it says about love. Of course, love is a fruit of the Spirit, and it's listed in, you know, I don't know if the, sometimes I wish that God had put, like, patience in the front, you know, because then maybe it would have been a stronger thing that we could have been able to get more of that quicker, because it's this love, joy, peace. But see, I think without the love, joy, and peace, you can't do the gentleness, the temperance, or the patience. There's just, there's, there's no way to do that. So, but it says here, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against these, there is no law. So today, I'm going to be talking about one of the nine fruits is the love of God. And against the love of God, there is no law. That means you can love somebody over and over and over and over who don't deserve it at all. And there's no law. In fact, as you do that, it's probably going to build your patience. It's probably going to build your faithfulness. It's probably going to build your gentleness. It's going to build your self-control for sure. Because remember when Paul asked, you know, how many times, or Peter asked, how many times do I, for, I forgive? Seven times? I don't know where you got remember that number. And Jesus said, no, seven times. How many? Seventy. For one offense? Are you kidding me? No, it's true. That's what he said. So today I want to talk to you about the love connection. When I woke up early Thursday morning, the Holy Spirit said to me, that you could give all that you have to feed the poor. You could surrender your body. He said, but Sheila, if you serve or you connect and you serve and you grow and you did not do it the same way as the gifts in love, you have done it in vain. And as I looked at that, I said, Lord, what are you saying? He said, many people serve in the church. We're told to serve in the church. We're taught to serve in the church. You should serve in the church. But many times we're not told as much to go and serve out in the kingdom. We're not to go, to go out there. But you know, have you ever noticed people who have never met each other, they will come together and they will run a race for cancer. They will walk a walk-a-thon for autism. They will uh, do many things for did things. But they... Thousands of people, uh, Tim and I were part of the founding of the Susan Coleman Walk here for many years ago. And the first year we had about a thousand people came together for people surviving breast cancer and people fighting breast cancer. And by a few years into it, there was 10,000 people there. And I would, some had teams, so they knew each other. But the majority of those people had no idea who was coming to run that race with them, that 5K race with them. But they were coming for the cause. See, the agape love should make people want to come to where you're going for the cause of Christ. But when they don't see us truly display the love of God between us, they don't want to come to where we are and gather with us because they didn't sense that they were loved out there, so why would they be loved in here? God is calling us to be a church of love. We are to connect to God's love, his light, and his life. We're to connect to his love. For God so loved the world that, that whoever would believe on him would not be for, would not be, excuse me, I can't even read my own writing. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes on him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And many people will read that and they, oh, I'm good. I love the world, I love Jesus, I go to church, and that's what I do. But we really don't love the world. We don't even really love each other sometimes. We know we don't like each other sometimes. Amen? For those who are married, we know we're commanded to love. There's nowhere in the Bible that told me I had to like anybody. Do y'all want the real world word, or y'all just want the watered-down stuff and y'all can go home? Right? 
But God never told you to like anyone. That's why he told you. That's why when the fruit of the spirits are here, that he gave that we were going to need patience. We were going to need faithfulness. We were going to need gentleness. We were going to need those other fruit, not just love, joy, and peace, but we're going to need those other ones to work it all out. But John 3, 17 says, God did not send his son into his son of the world that the whole, that the world might, <laughs> excuse me. I'm, you know what happens? I get so excited with what I'm saying. My brain goes faster than, my mouth goes faster than my brain can. Y'all should have all said amen. It says, for God did not send his son into the world uh, to, to, get, to, to condemn, I can't even say it now, condemn the world, but that the world might know him. See, the, 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 he did not come to condemn them. He came to shine the light of his love. He came to shine the light of his hope. And he came to shine the light of his work on the cross. That they might be saved, it says, through him. Well, how are they going to be saved through him? They're going to be saved through him by you and I being that light, being that love, and being the life of Christ in the streets. We're to grow, I said we should grow in the word, but truly we should grow through the word. You know, I can grow in the word all day. I can study, 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 but I never apply it, and I never take it out to the streets and really do it, then all I've done is puff myself up. But when I read the word and God says, true and undefiled religion in James 128, true and undefiled religion is to take care of widows and orphans. And I read that, and I said, well, that's great. I know a bunch of other people that have all these beautiful organizations, and they are taking care of them. I'm just so glad that's happening. No, when you read it, maybe God wanted you to be responsible for it too. Amen? Service from the motivation of his love in the body of Christ and the world. 1 Peter 2 says, honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. I love that scripture because he wants us to serve each other here in the house of God. In fact, the Bible says if you have the means to do something that you know they're in the house of God and you do not do that, that you are, should be a put to shame. Because why? Because we are to care for each other. And when we care for each other out of a true love for God first, the agape love, the movement of God from he came to us and then we are to go to them. When we know that we're truly walking in love and we take it to a world that is lost and hurting and dying and going to hell, we can make a difference. It's not us making the difference. It's us being the mouthpiece, the mouthpiece for God to say, I know someone who wants to bless you and love you and accept you where you are, then take you to where you are to go. Where you were called before you were ever placed in your mother's womb to go, I know a man who wants to change your life. See, on January 25th, 1984, I met a man in a hotel room, and that name was Jesus Christ. I thought I'd been saved my whole life. I'd been saved and I'd been sanctified in the Holy Ghost when I was 13 years old and received the baptism. And I served the Lord all the way in my life. And then all of a sudden when Tim and I got married at the age of 19, we, we just kind of, we went to church for a while. We went to, then we had kids and, you know, all those things that kind of take you away from God. I never went out in the world, but I never kind of went to church until my mama kept calling me and kept saying, you're going to take them babies to church. Hey, it works, guys. Just telling you. To call your kids. You're going to take the babies to church? Because you know what? She wanted me to make sure my kids were reared in the church because she knew how important it wasn't about church, but it was about the Jesus. The Jesus and the work of the cross and the Holy Spirit that was there. You know, and when I met that man, the man I met was through a Gideon Bible. I sat down on the side of the bed and I was going to make a wrong decision in my life. And I pulled the drawer open to write a note, and it was an open Gideon Bible. I looked down, and it says, Psalm 37, Delight in the Lord and do good, and I will give you the desires of your heart. And that night, I rededicated my life at 1.33 in the morning to the Lord Jesus Christ, and I've never looked back. And from that point on, you know, I thought I'd go home, and Tim would just come into the kingdom, and we'd just start going. It took a little while. But you know what? What God promised me that night on January 25, 1984. He truly 
has fulfilled every word of that promise that night sitting on the edge of that bed when I met the man. We can met a man, but when you meet the man, Jesus Christ, he will change everything. And when his love truly comes into your heart, into your mind, and into your spirit, you know that there is nothing that's going to be able to quench that except for another dose of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. So I want to encourage y'all today that we truly ask the Holy Spirit for that love connection. You know, I have to stay with my notes because every time I do that, they have a setting on your thing which Pastor told me and I did not put it on my computer, on my iPad. So we are to honor and we're to love the brotherhood, fear God, and honor the king. You know, the scripture in Philippians it says this. It says, is there any, any encouragement from belonging to Christ? Question mark. Any comfort in his love? Question mark. Any fellowship together in the spirit? Are your hearts tender and compassionate? That they make me genuinely happy by agreeing wholeheartedly with each other. Now here, he was talking to the church. Wholeheartedly with each other, loving one another, and working together with one mind and one purpose. Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble, thinking as of yourself as better as anyone else. No. Don't look out for only your own interests, but take interest in others too. How do we know what our motives are really at? How do we know if our motives are truly motivated by God's love connection? Oh, the, the love of God's connection is truly where we have made that connection, where we are, we're truly going to grow spirit, soul, and body. When your motives of life are to be a living example of God's love each day, and you ask him to connect you with those who he preordained you to be with, to connect to. You know, there's times... Years ago, Pastor uh, Tony Stewart used to be our pastor here. He always said there was a reason, a season, and a time for everything. Well, you know, we know that's in Ecclesiastes. But he always said some people come into your life for a reason. Some people come into your life for a season. But then there's other people who will come into your life for a lifetime. And those are people that you know truly, truly love you. They'll tell you the truth about you. And they'll correct you when you need to be corrected. And they will encourage you when you need to be corrected or when you need to be encouraged. They are there for you. See, as a church, I think we need to be more encouraging. I think we need to be more edifying. And most of all, we need to be more loving in the house and out of the house. What's the benefits of truly being a Christian that connects with the love connection of God that you're truly, truly in love with Jesus. Brother Daniel prayed this morning. And when he prayed, he prayed for us to have a baptism of love in this place today. Not a baptism of love that's going to meet all my needs and take care of me and give me what I need and pay my house payment and pay my car payment. Because what did God say? He said, seek first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added unto you in Matthew 6, no, God's wanting us to make a love connection that we so esteem one another that every time we come to church, even the great messages of the great pastor that we have and preach the word, that somebody at the door would say something to you that was so direct that it could only come from the God above and that because of the Father sitting at the right hand of his son, Jesus sitting at the right hand of the Father, that it was his, that word someone spoke to you that gave you the encouragement to keep going another moment, to keep going another hour, to keep going another day, another week, another month, another year, because it, they were just the vessel of obedience to do it. When your motives are pure... For, for witnessing, for caring, for studying, for praying, and for doing, then you will see that it is the love of God that produces, first of all, his love teaches us to be servants, not to be driven by service. Because usually when you're driven by service, 
you're still wanting man's approval. I can tell you for most of my Christian life, the first 20 years, I struggled with man's approval. I struggled because I wanted someone to love me like I knew God loved me. But see, nobody can love you like God loves you. Until you realize that, then you can have or, or open yourself to have more love come toward you. Because if you're working for it, it's hard to get. Because love does not fail. Love does not see the wrongs that man sees. Love does not judge you. It may convict you, but it won't judge you. It may show you your wrong ways, but it won't judge you. It may bring correction, but it brings caressing along with it when God truly, truly convicts you. So love, it will have you live a life of love of God instead of a life of driven service. It produces conviction and then forgiveness. It grows up us up to bear more fruit. Not just, remember you've been given a measure of faith. We wasn't given a measure of fruit, were we? But the greatest of these, what we were given out of 1 Corinthians 13, 13. Faith, hope, and love, charity. And the greatest of these, he said, is love. It will build up others. His love, his agape love, will change the world through you. And most of all, it will point us to Jesus and it will point people to Jesus. One can know that we are not motivated by love when our actions are driven by approval, or attention, or guilt, or pride, or shame, or materialism, or to feel good about ourselves. That's not true love. Because as Sister Joy sang, in the quietness, in the quietness sitting before God, that's the real us. That's the real us where we can tell him everything and anything and he won't hold it against us. So if you're still struggling to find your place and you want to serve, we want you to serve, but we want us to all to start connecting in love, love for God, love for Jesus, love for Holy Spirit and his word, and then ask God, connect me with those I'm to serve with. So, you know, a few weeks ago they had the, the cleaning of the church and people came out a lot of you had never really talked to each other within the church walls until you come out to serve together. Service is important because it's where you truly get to know people personally. Amen? And are you going to love everybody? No, because you don't even know them yet. But you love them through Christ. But when you get to know them, you go, man, I really love that woman. Man, I really love that man. Why? Because you got to know them. See, God's love wants to get to know you. See, so many times we want God just to meet our need. We want God just to take care of what's wrong. We want him just to fix what's been broken. He's like our God, the handyman. But God wants to be your all in all. He wants to love you from the inside out so you won't need the erotic love because you have his love. You might not ever even need brotherly love, but you want brotherly love because you love him and he loved his family and he wants us to love our family. He wants us to connect with that connection love that only comes through spending time with God. The gifts of the Spirit and the skills that God has given us are given to each believer that we can operate and we can love others like God loved us. And then to, then to love people. You know, there's very little places that God tells us to love people. He's, or to, to, tr to love him. Because he loves us. He says, Lo trust God, love people. See, only way that people are out in the world and the only way that you and here are going to be here and know the love of God is by us loving each other and truly showing the love of God. I wish I could tell you what the love of God looks like. 
Because it looks like the fruit of the Spirit. It looks kind. It looks peaceable. It looks joyful. It looks faithful. It looks gentle. It looks long-suffering. See, in the Scripture in 1 Corinthians 14, it says, if in the New Living Translation, absence love we are a noisy clang, but with the love that his love is like perfected four-part harmony of the, I used the Naples Philharmonic because it used the one over in Greece. I thought y'all would be more familiar with Naples Philharmonic. When we love well, we fulfill God's will. To live in love should be our highest goal. Let love be your highest goal, according to 1 Corinthians 14.1. In fact, the full scripture says, let love be your highest goal, but you should love also, desire the special abilities of the Spirit, especially the abilities to prophesy. But he also tells us if you prophesy and you prophesy without love, you are clanging, symbol. People really don't want to hear you. I want to tell you this morning, um, there was two things that have already happened with the scripture, with these scriptures that I have given you today that you're going to see in the end that God confirmed because when I finished the message on Thursday morning and I came to praise and practice work to worship on um, Thursday night, when Sister Joy opened our practice with his love endures forever, his love endures forever, I knew then that I had heard from God that morning around 4, p 4 a.m. because I had heard from God. Amen. And there's going to be another time, the word that Sister Pat Parkinson, Pastor Pat, gave forward. At the end of the message, you're going to see what she said about being covered, what Joy sang about being covered, that God had already planned this before the foundations of the earth. What are the, some of the goals that we can set as Christians to love as the Father loves? First, we connect to God's love. Now, as we talk about prayer every day, every day we say pray, pray, spend time with God, spend time in the Word. But I'm going to tell you today, would you spend time and let God love on you this week? Would you spend time, instead of going to Him with your grocery list of want needs, I need this, I need that, would you go to Him and say, Father, I'm going to do, take that challenge Sister Sheila gave us, and I want you to show me love. I want you to teach me about love. I, as a Christian, you said that they would know we are Christians by the love that we show for each other. So I want to make a love connection with you today. You tell God, I want to make that love connection with you. And I'm going to challenge you this next whole week. Every day in your private time, in your quietness and stillness of time, as that song we sang, would you ask God, I'm say, God, I'm not going to pray today, my words. But I'm going to ask you, would you baptize me in a gift of love? Would you baptize me in the fruit of the love? Would you show me how to truly love others, especially when I go out into the world and the lost and hurting and the broken world that is out there? Would you show me how to love like you would love if you were walking on this street? Because I'm your ambassador. I am your servant first, and then I am your ambassador. And Romans 10 said, how will they know unless a preacher will preach? But how will they then know unless we go and share what we have been given in this house on this day to change the world for God's glory, but most of all, for his love? We are to grow in God's word. As never before, we need to get into the word. We need to grow through it. You know, one time my kids were doing some things and they were in their teen years and I was all exasperated and, you know, I don't know about y'all, but I was doing a little screaming, a little hissy fit. In the South, we have hissy fits. Amen? We call it okay because we say in Jesus' name or God bless you, but we just got, we just having a hissy fit. Okay, women, we're good at this. Men, y'all just kind of blow up like big blow fogs. You don't blow up, you just blow up like one. And then we turn off. Come on. We're not, yeah, why are you not saying amen? But as never before, we need to know the word. 
Brother Daniel prayed today. He said, I believe that we are so close to the end that God is about to come. I believe that the trumpet's about to be sounded. And I believe that if you watch the times that we are in some of the most perilous times we have ever lived in, but I do not fear it because I serve a God of love. And his love is unconditional. And his love will carry us through when everybody else will fail us. His love will carry us on to where he called us, anointed us, and appointed us to go for such a time as this because no weapon formed against us is going to prosper. Every tongue that rises against us is going to be found in the wrong. And the word of God stands true and amen no matter what the world may say, no matter what the world may do. I know that our God is true and just and he will be faithful faithful to come through for everyone who has put their trust in him. Amen. Yes. Give him a hand clap. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus said to me that when I'm as a mom, he said, if you will grow through it, they will grow out. Of it. If you will pray and put your trust in me and trust the seed that you have planted, they will come through it. I know that God has still got some things to do in our family and our children's lives that he's still perfecting and the seeds that Tim and I planted as parents that those seeds are going to come forth. But when I stand up here honestly, happy, by the way, happy Daughter's Day to everybody. It's National Daughter's Day. So all you are daughters of the king and you're all daughters. Amen. Not men, just the daughters, okay? But you know, when I stand up here and I have my joy, my flesh, blood leading the praise and worship I would tell you that I would want her praise my to be my praise and worship leader even if she wasn't my daughter well, because I see her heart and see I know her heart do we always get along Ask her right now no sometimes our battles they're useless sometimes they're serious Sometimes they were needed. Sometimes they were just, just parents and, and daughters being parents and daughters. But the point of it is, the anointing of God that's on her life is what I honor. The person that she is is what I honor. Because I know she's sold out to Jesus Christ. But the Lord said, you grow through it. And, they and here it's been parents, you can say. Amen to that. Amen. Most importantly, that we want to see here, if we, whatever we're, we grow through it. We trust the seeds that God has, God's desire for us to grow hard times as much as he, he wants us to grow in great times and hard times. You ever notice that people grow more when they're going through a difficult time? Don't y'all want to grow in God's love and God's word and service? great times as much as you did in the bad times see if you start going through a bad time you start going through a struggle if you'll start remembering if you start remembering how good Take a mic. Thank you. Amen. I, I, <laughs> amen. Aren't y'all glad that broke while I was having the preach on me? See, when we start to serve first in the church and then into the world, and we serve, truly serve, because Jesus said, if you want to be great in his kingdom, you are to what? Learn to be a servant. We miss that part sometimes. You want to be great in God's kingdom? Be a servant. No, he said learn. And Jesus said he learned through the things that he suffered. Sometimes I have to look at my battles sometimes and say, God, did I cause this? If I cause this, I repent. But if I didn't cause this, I ask the Lord to show me his love through it and then grow me in it, and let it be a stepping stone to the next place that I'm going. 
Because God did not call me to fail. He called me to a future and a hope. He called you to a future and a hope. He has never called anyone to fail. And he never called anyone to have the enemy of our souls try to attack us and keep us down. He had us know that we know our Father, our Son, and the Holy Spirit, and that we have the love of God, and that love is unconditional, and it covers a multitude of sin. So there's no power that can hold us back when we know that we are in love with God and doing it for his love and the building of his kingdom. God's love for us is the greatest love. It makes us come alive in Christ. Other loves will always fail us. The world right now is lacking love. And the only way they're going to get that love is through you and through me. You know, Diana Ross, many years ago, sang a song, What the world needs now is love, sweet love. That's the only thing, that there's just too little love. She was singing that in a, sex, a sexual, excuse me, secular way and sexual way. And the church today needs to start singing that song in a agape love way, in the connection way, that everything I do from going to the bank to going to Publix to going to work to going to visit a friend, I'm going to go in the name of Jesus through his love that he gave upon the cross of Calvary that a lost and hurting and broken world could be restored, refined, and replaced into a family that will accept them where they are and love them to where God Almighty wants them to go in Jesus' name. Ephesians 2, 4, and through 5 says, But because of his great love, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive in Christ. And when we were dead in transgressions, it was by grace you have been saved. Today, the great love connection, God's love connection, is that you'll be challenged to ask him every day, would you baptize me afresh in the Holy Spirit, fire of the Holy Spirit, and Jesus gave up on the cross. That love that saves soul, that love that accepts people where they are, but loves them anyway. That love that saved you, may he baptize you afresh and new in that love that you can go out to a lost and hurting world and love others. Joy, would you come to the piano, please? Close. Go ahead. So, is, you are? You are. Well, I'll, I'll, Joy, just play it. Go ahead. Joy, I'll play. Dustin, that's okay. Joy, I'll play it. You are the love of my life. You are the hope that I cling to you mean more than this world to me I wouldn't trade you for silver or gold I wouldn't trade you for riches untold you are you are my everything. I couldn't take one step without you. 
I could never go on my own. I couldn't take one day with breathing without you. Because I don't have the strength to make it on my own. You are the love of my life. Is he your love of your life today? You are the hope that I cling to. You mean more than this world to me. I wouldn't trade you for silver and gold. I wouldn't trade you for riches untold. You are Lord, you are my everything, Lord Jesus, you are, you are my everything today? Is he your everything? Is he your everything today? Oh, Father, will you stand? Joy, you can keep playing. I challenge you today to spend that time in prayer that you just say, God, I need your love just to cover me. I need your love just to run over me like it did over Aaron's beard. Just run down and just, just immerse me so that I can love a lost and hurting world. I can love my brothers and sisters and I can love through whatever I'm going to face this week. I'll choose to do it in love before I do it in anything else. I said, Lord, I want to close with a scripture that it would be so pertinent to what, you was, what I'm trying to convey to you today. And this is what the Lord gave me. If you're familiar with Ezekiel 15 and 16, it's when God looked at Israel and he saw she was naked. He saw she was bloody. He saw she was laying out in a field, and she had been forsaken. But this is what he said to her after seeing her that way, and then after he started to touch the life of Israel, all of a sudden he said in Ezekiel 16, 8, when I pass by you again, now listen, you've done your challenge this week, and God's going to start pouring his love, his unconditional love, his sacrificial love, his cleansing love, his forgiving love, his made whole love. He's going he's to baptize you and immerse you in his love. He said, I passed by you again and looked upon you. Indeed, your time was the time of love. So I spread my wings, Sister Pat, over you and covered your nakedness. Yes, I swore an oath to you and entered into a covenant with you. And you became mine, says the Lord. Even as Christians, there's times that we feel unloved, unwanted, and unaccepted. But when we have the love of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, we can truly know that we are made whole. Would you lift your hands with me and pray? Heavenly Father, I pray over each and every one of these precious people today. I pray, Lord God, that you purify us. You purify our motives to look like your love, Lord God, to walk like your love, to speak like your love. Jesus, let us remember that you paid the price of your life on the cross of Calvary, that the church could be the church. When you prayed in John 17 and you said, I pray that you would be one with me as I am with the Father. Father, I pray that we will be people that are sin free. We know that we sin, but Father God, that we will ask for forgiveness quickly. Let there be no account between you and us, Lord God. 
Father God, that the effects of sin will not linger in our lives, Lord God, but they will be forgiven and forgotten as far as the east is from the west. Holy Spirit, teach us how to experience the fullness of God's love in the body of Christ first and then out in the world that we can be a witness and that the people out there will see that we are Christians by the love that we show for one another. May the fullness of your Godhead start to flow through us and then flow from us that we too, Lord God, will know that we are accepted in the beloved and then we can go out and accept those that are broken and dying in the world and headed for hell, Lord God. So Christ, through your love connection, I ask that you and your Father will be one in us and that we would be one in you, growing through the word, serving not only for the church, but serving for you, that everything we do, everything we touch, everything we taste, everything we see, Lord God, that the motive of love will be there and that we truly will be motivated by love, Lord God, an unconditional, unjudgmental, kind-hearted love, Lord Jesus, that you will teach us to take the gospel from this place to the world, that the world will not be condemned but the world will know that Jesus is Jesus and that he is real and that he can be touched, he can be received, and that he will never leave us nor forsake us. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, and the people would say, amen. I love you. God bless you. Jesus loves you. Please do not forget your tithing offering. And if anyone would like prayer today and you say, Sheila, I just need a love connection with God. I need a fresh dose of the Holy Ghost.